Hello everyone and thank you for tuning in to another episode of Common Sense. Uh, we are here, it's my privilege to introduce Wynne Farwell who is certainly no stranger to Brockton. Um, everyone in Brockton I would say knows the name and knows Wynne Farwell. So Wynne, thank you for coming in. Thank you, my pleasure. My so pleasure, um, you want to get back in the ring. <coughs> I, I well, do. You've always I, been in the ring, but so I, in a different capacity. I mean, I enjoyed being out and, and watching the development of the city. Uh, but, but frankly, and I really never expected to run again, but it seems as though we have circled back to many, if not all, of the same issues that, that were in effect in Brockton when I was in the mayor's office. And I, I kept saying to myself, you know, you had a real honor. You were, you were blessed to represent the city and, and be the mayor. And... Uh, to the extent that I can come back into elective uh, politics and give some of my uh, experience and education and training and start looking at the different issues that we're facing, I'd really like to do it. I, I don't think you ever lose a love for the city once you've been involved. No, I think that the people who stay in Brockton uh, obviously have a love for the city. There's, there's so many good things that Brockton has to offer. Um, it's uh, such an interesting place. I mean. I think it really is a big a big town, but you know, because everyone in Brockton sort of knows each other. Yeah. It's uh, you know, a city of about a hundred thousand people, but it's it's really like a town. I mean, people know each other pretty well, and um, it's a great place to be. Really, I mean, it's a great location, and there's so much uh, diversity here and so much to offer. Uh, certainly, with our school system, um, yes. you have quite the lengthy resume. Why don't uh, you tell the folks uh, all the interesting roles and positions you've held? I mean. You've uh, worked for the state, you've worked for the police force, you've been the mayor of Brockton. I mean, you, you have an extensive and interesting background. So please uh, inform the viewers or remind the viewers of uh, where you've been. Well, I started off actually uh, warming up the Ward 1 school committee seat for you. <laughs> and, Thanks. <laughs> uh, uh, and spent 10 years there and, and loved every minute of it. Um, most people don't know it, but all of my relatives except for my dad and me were uh, educators. Uh, my aunt taught... 41 years at Brockton High School. My grandfather was a uh, principal, and as you know, I mentioned to you, my great-grandmother was involved with the school board uh, a long, long time ago, and uh, I started off as a school committee member, um, and that's after I went to BU and earned a, a graduate degree in education. Uh, I didn't want to get locked into just law enforcement. I wanted to kind of expand and, and understand how important the educational programs and services were to children. And then I saw the city really go through some very difficult times in the late uh, uh, 1980s and into 1991. And as you remember, we laid off 25% of the city workforce uh, because of financial issues. Yeah, so I mean, those years that you mentioned, um, I got out of law school in 1990. I was clerking for Jack Sims over on Crescent Street, Sims and Sims, um, and uh, the city was transitioning. I mean. Uh, a lot of the work that they had me doing at the time was doing foreclosure work. Yeah. Uh, so it was it was really the first foreclosure cycle that I was ever involved with. And, um, you know, it was sad. A lot of boarded up buildings. Um, you, know, I, you know, you came back to Brockton. I came back from law school and I'm like, what the heck's going on here? You know, it was a tough time. And, uh, you know, a lot of people were trying to refinance, couldn't refinance their homes because the equity wasn't there. Yes. But yet they were paying, they yes. were paying their mortgages on time, but yet locked into these higher interest rates because of the equity issue. The values had dropped. That's true. Uh, that's, that's so true. When property values drop, if someone needs to, let's say, take out a small home equity loan to pay for first year tuition, and you find out the value of your property. Or a wedding, or et cetera, or, a wedding et cetera, or something yeah, else. Yeah. Absolutely. So I ran for mayor. I, I really was uh, so disturbed when uh, 31 police officers and 35 firefighters were laid off. And I ran for mayor saying, well, you know, it's like balancing a checkbook at home. You've got to use priorities, common sense. You've got X number of dollars coming in, so you can only expend X number of dollars. And I ran for mayor, and I served the last four-year term. And we made some really difficult decisions, which, uh, frankly, uh, cost me a few friendships, and people were angry. I, I uh, said to the city employees, you really need to pay 20% towards your health insurance. Before, it was 95% paid by the city, 5% by the... It doesn't make you a popular person in, in City Hall, does it? No, it, it doesn't. And, and, of course, having been a member of the police union, they said, well, we thought you were one of us. And I said, you know, I still am. 
But when you're the mayor, you're still a city employee, but you have different responsibilities. Yeah, and, and sometimes you have to be the adult in the room. Well, it, it wasn't so much that they were being juvenile, but I, I think they were quite shocked at the financial picture and the uh, the draconian uh, way that we really had to uh, approach it. I mean, there was no phasing in of this and that. You really had to make a decision, which way is this city going to go? Mm. And uh, after I left the, the mayor's office, uh, I did work for the state as commissioner of yeah, public safety sure. exactly. uh, under Governor Weld, and I loved every minute of that. Uh, and then I ultimately came back and retired from city service. Didn't I see your name on elevators? You did. We did well, elevators. I go into an elevator and I say, I know when. Building inspections, welfare fraud. We had quite a, a potpourri of things on our plate. Uh, but if you ask me what do I like best, I would say, well, I think being a, a father and, and, and a husband, I remarried, uh, were probably my, my most favorite things to do. But I enjoyed being a street cop. Uh, really? You know, finding that kid's bicycle after it was maybe taken and dumped somewhere or finding a lost child was probably number one when you're mm -hmm. able to pull into the yard and have the uh, child hop out of the cruiser and the mother and father are there. And I loved every minute of being out in the street and it really gave me a snapshot of what crime and drugs and public safety means to people in neighborhoods. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, people, when you talk to them today in Brockton, one of the biggest issues they have is crime. Um, you certainly have a background and uh, familiarity with the city. Tell me what you think of what's going on and what uh, you think needs to be done or what can be done. Well, I, first of all, the, there has to be a commitment to hire more police officers and people will say, well, where are you going to get the money? Well, that's and always the next question. That's okay. the next so question. We all agree on that. We, but we agree. So I mentioned the other night. I haven't we, heard one person say, no, don't hire any more officers. Well, that's it. The devil is in the details. Mm -hmm. uh, but I mentioned the other night that I, I think you really need a three to five year strategic plan and you need to take a look at your anticipated retirements because those officers are going to be at the top of the wage scale and how many are going to retire and then you're going to bring in new officers who are paid at a lower wage because they're step one, step two in the collective bargaining process and in addition take all of the unexpended, unencumbered monies that have been appropriated in a fiscal year and have the city council carve them out and put them in a special account. Appropriate them to a public safety services account so that you can hire more police and make sure you hire adequate fire personnel because if you don't have a plan, if you right. don't have a target or a goal, then you're really not going to be as successful as you can be. And you may not reach that goal. For example, we may say in five years we want to hire an additional 50 officers over and above retirements. Maybe we only get 35. But if we're all working together, if the council and the mayor uh, work together, I think we can make a huge difference in addressing public safety concerns. And, and the other thing is the police really have to reach out to the community. You could have a thousand police officers in Brockton and if you have an adversarial relationship or you don't have a, a trust relationship with every neighborhood and with the kids to the extent you can, you won't be very effective. Mm. And I, I remember in my youth, uh, if you saw a police officer on the beat, number one, you'd better be doing the right thing uh, or your parents would back up the police officer. And the other thing is you, you had a certain level of trust and I'd like to see based on what's happened in the country, I'd like to see a, a, a priority one be building those relationships. Well, I mean, it's interesting that you say that. Um, you know, you were on the school committee and I'm sure you're aware that uh, some of the schools have uh, resource officers, have police officers yes. that are part of the fabric of the school. I think that's a great step um, because those officers have relationships with many of our students and um, you know some of our students are, have high needs and need uh, that attention uh, of a role model and I think that's a great opportunity for outreach and th they're so valuable I would say you know people say what do you mean there's a police officer in the school well there's a police officer in the school a of course to um, help out with respect to keeping things uh, orderly but yet their engagement their involvement their interaction with the students, that, that's 90% of their day. Yes. You know, 10% might be dealing with a disciplinary issue or something, but the, the most of the time is spent forging relationships, uh, gaining trust of kids that might come from neighborhoods who, um, you know, the police aren't really a welcome site, but yet th they forge relationships and I think it's a positive to have, 
you know, these officers, and I think it's, it's benefited the Brockton Public Schools uh, in many ways. Oh, I, I think you're right. I, I think you have to have that as a priority. Uh, I mean, let's face it, if you see someone as only an enforcement officer, the relationship you're going to have with that person will be very different. If you see that person as a community resource, someone you can trust, someone mm -hmm. you might be able to go to and say, look, I don't want to get involved, but I happen to know this kid who's going to pick up a gun on Friday night. And, and I know some kids don't want to drop a dime, as they say, but there are others who realize that it could be their friend who right, dies, exactly. or it could be a neighbor who is hurt by a weapon and you really need that that relationship yeah. with the police and, and these officers men and women um, we have both in the system you know they attend functions they attend sporting events you know they're just interacting fooling around with the kids you know it, it really is I would say you know a value to have you know this broad role of these people these officers in in the system so absolutely great. absolutely um, question you mentioned about um, you know the retirement of some of the um, the uh, uh, older officers some of the officers that are making you know higher salaries and yes. things um, does the the city have the discretion um, of basically bringing on more patrol personnel you know that obviously would come in at sort of starting salaries um, when these higher up let's say captains or lieutenants retire or does the city have to like have X number of captains at all time and of course if you have X number of captains it comes with a huge price tag because you know they're certainly making a much larger salary than the patrolman coming in so so if let's say two captains retire or a couple lieutenants retire you know whatever can you say, okay, we're not going to fill those positions. We're going to bring in more patrol people instead. Is, is that a possibility or is that, how does well, that work? Th you tell me, you're the expert yeah, on this. Well, there is an ordinance that, that uh, outlines how many uh, captains and lieutenants and sergeants there will be in the city. Uh, and yes, the higher ranking officers do cost more than the patrol officers. But I almost think that police work has become, become so complex that you want that level of supervision. You want those captains watching the different uh, patrol divisions and the, the uh, administration and training, uh, over overseeing what's going on. You want the lieutenants keeping the sergeants on top of things, and you certainly want the sergeants who are out on the street watching the men and women of the police department. They, you know, you there is a misnomer that captains, lieutenants, and sergeants don't enforce the law. They go to calls. I mean, you'll have your shift commander or your uh, assistant uh, shift commander. They're going to be out in the street with you. If there's a major incident, you can bet it's all hands on deck. And I think the public should realize that, yes, they do have a different rank. Yes, they are paid differently. But when push comes to shove, they're right there. Uh, the other thing is under collective bargaining, if you wanted to change the ordinance, if you wanted to do something different, you do have to sit down and bargain with the, the superior officer's union. But personally, I'm very comfortable with the level of captains, lieutenants, and sergeants we have. I only hope that we hire enough officers so that perhaps we need additional ranking officers to make sure that we have a top-notch police department. Mm -hmm. We have adequate supervision out on the street. I, I would agree with that. I would, I would say that you definitely have adequate supervision. My only my only criticism would be that as Brockton over the years has their patrol officers have been redu reduced the people at the top have not they've always kept the same command structure in terms of the number of X Y and Z for less number of patrol officers so so to me that relationship should be somewhat or should have been somewhat symbiotic meaning that look at if the percentages go down we need to we need to, you know, you can't just make a blatant statement and say, well, get rid of these, these number of positions. But I think that there needed to be some refocus on, all right, what makes sense where we only have X officers. We used to, well, in, in, the, in the boom years, how many officers did Brockton carry, you know, when you would feel that we had a comfortable level in Brockton years ago? Well, that, that's kind of a difficult uh, question to answer right. because, of course, the times have changed. So back in 1975, I think we had 
probably 200 patrolmen plus the the, the ranking officers. A total and, of how many roughly? Uh, well, 200. Right, let's say there might have been about 230 people okay. on the police yeah, department. Yeah. And my now best how many memory, officers are there? Patrol officers. Oh, now I think we're way down to about 181. Okay. I think we're yeah. we're way down. Okay. Uh, yeah. But. The other thing is that the ranking officers, and, and I, I don't want to lose this point, they step up to the plate, and they did step up to the plate, particularly when we had layoffs in the late 1980s. They were out there on the street. You had a major traffic accident, you had a major arrest, you had a major incident. You would see those ranking officers right along with the rest of the patrolmen because you know what? There's a certain kindred spirit, regardless of the rank you hold. And that's true of the fire department, too. Uh, you, you're going to see the men and women of the police department do what they can when it's needed and rank really other than specific duties and responsibilities become somewhat irrelevant when you have a major incident. Mm -hmm. Well, we've got a lot going on in Brockton. Um, what are some of the other issues besides, you know, crime, the police department, you, uh, you want to address uh, out there on the campaign trail? Well, I, I started off really with three major issues, and that was safety in our neighborhoods and our playgrounds, which of which course is, is huge. public safety, That's safety huge, related. Huge. Uh, the other thing is a strong and effective school system, because I haven't lost my love of, oh, uh, of the public schools. We appreciate and, uh, that. You know, I, I, had, uh, I had a superintendent say to us once, sometimes the best six and a half hours in a kid's life are at the high school or at the, one of the junior highs or elementary schools, because they were around a support system. They had... Uh, uh, a meal. They had friends. They had safety and security. And you know, we really need to ensure that. Yeah, that they goes have structure. On. They, they have, have structure. Yeah, they have safety yes. and structure, and you yes. know, and certainly people that uh, care and are attentive. I mean, uh, to me, the the biggest decline in our society is the uh, the breakdown of the family unit. You know, the breakdown of um, you know kids having kids, um, people unprepared to become parents, uh, people uh, kids basically not having that role model, not having that structure, not having that responsible person in their life raising them. I mean, there's too many children, unfortunately, today, not only in Brockton, but all over the country. You see all the issues that we have. I mean, um, without good parenting, you produce you know, what you see now, you know, yeah, well, you, which you, is craziness. The most successful children are the ones who have parents who are involved with the teacher, involved in what goes on in the and school. We all agree that there's obviously the exception to the rule. There are certainly children out there that do well. That yes. You know, there's yes. always an exception. There's a kid, kids that are motivated and basically, I don't want, I want to do better than, you know, what I have today. Yes. And that always happens. But like you said, the percentages are better when you have that support. Much better, much better. And, and the other issue, frankly, that uh, has always been uh, close to me is the financial management of the city. It, it troubles me when the bond rating goes down. Uh, it troubles me to have Brockton present an image of financial instability because that translates into people wondering, well, are the school services, are the public safety services going to be there for me if I either open a new business in the city or if I move to Brockton? So it's, it's kind of all interconnected, but the financial management picture to me is critical. And I, I do say that uh, having worked with the financial control board when I was first elected as mayor, having worked with city councils, put together budgets, carefully balancing anticipated revenues with expenditures and prioritizing where uh, the money should be appropriated, I really would like to uh, have the trust and support of the people and, and return to the city council as an elected official and apply that. Uh, it, it's, it's something we have to do. I mean, it's critical in a family. I, uh, right. You can't function in any family if you don't have financial stability because you just will not know, okay, what am I going to be able to do? What can't I do? What right. will I be able to do? So it's... Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, we went through a, a layoff this year with the teachers. We laid off approximately 60 teachers because of, a, you know, because of an inadequate budget. Um, you know, obviously, there's a cost to that, and that is, you know, higher class sizes. Um, and, you know, our population in the schools um, is not getting easier. You know, it's getting... Um, it's getting children, more and more children that are coming from, um, you know, poverty. It's getting more and more children that are um, coming from different countries where English isn't their primary language. 
Um, the Brockton Public Schools is not the same. When we went there, um, um, you know, you have a, uh, a ELL population, you know, in the 30s, some odd 30 yeah. percent. You know, we have a, a special ed population of about 13 percent, which um, they say is not uh, out of uh, line with other communities. But the question is the cost of some of those students. We have some very um, costly uh, issues that we have some children with some disabilities that are so severe. These poor children who have such severe disabilities that the cost of sending them to certain programs which um, you know they need um, you know certainly takes a huge hit from the budget and you know not that we're not going to do it we always do it but the question is you know um, what is the other impact on the rest of the school budget, you know, with respect to technology, with respect to um, improving facilities. I mean, you know, you know better than anyone, some of our buildings are very old and certainly need some TLC to bring them in line with, uh, um, you know, what uh, needs to happen for kids to have a, a decent uh, surrounding, a decent structure to work in and, uh, you know, do their schoolwork. You're right, and the other thing that we, we can't forget, particularly when you have teacher layoffs, some children get very, very disturbed if they think that the teacher they're going to have the next in the next grade is not going to be there. I mean, I, I still remember to this day the first six teachers I had at the Whitman School when I was in elementary school. Yeah. They had that kind of an impact on me. Uh, but you and I know that the one thing the Brockton schools have always done is they've presented an opportunity to any kid who was willing to put the time and effort in. Absolutely. If you want to participate and you want to do what's required of you and you want to really immerse yourself in all of the programs and services, you're going to go on and you're going to be highly successful whether you go to college or whether you go into the trades yeah. or whether you want to go to an Ivy League school. You're, you're going to make it because we prepare people for that. You know, I had, uh, I had a graduate tell me once, you know what I learned best at the high school? And I said, no. Well, I'm going to a big college. I, as a matter of fact, I think it was Northeastern. And he said, I'm going to know how I can find my way around campus because I had to find my way around campus yeah. at Brockton High School. It's not your average high school. No, not I mean, at there's all. There's so many facilities and, and rooms, and I always remember that. So there's a lot of what we do at the schools that uh, people may take for granted, but it, it's really important. Yeah, and, you know, the schools, like you said, provide that opportunity, and it doesn't matter if you come from money or not. Um, you're not charged for the extracurricular activities, uh, for the um, clubs that you want to be a part of. Um, it's a unique situation um, that, you know, a lot of the other suburban districts have to charge for. Um, you know, busing uh, is free, where other districts, you know, charge three fifty, four hundred dollars $400, you know, yeah. a, a year. Uh, you know, $300, $350 a sport. I mean, so, um, it's, an, it's a place, like you said, where kids, what you want to put into it, you can get out of it. Um, and, you know, for years and continuing to this day, you know, people look very favorably on the Brockton Public Schools. And that's one big reason of why people look favorably on the city, you know, as opposed to some other urban communities that, you know, their school system is not as um, productive or is not as... Uh, uh, successful and you know we're fortunate because we have uh, you know we have the support of you know our local politicians we have we have a great teaching staff um, and uh, we have a community I think that really cares about the Brockton Public Schools um, so that's one great thing that we we continue to maintain. Well, you've kind of given me a segue into oh, another well, campaign good. issue. Oh, good. That, uh, yeah. that, uh, well, we have five minutes left, so you well, tell me we'll, what you want to do in five minutes. We'll, we'll try to do the Reader's Digest well, version of some go. of these. Well. Then. If, if the legal team that might be assembled indicates that we're not getting our fair share mm -hmm. of reimbursements, uh, I would certainly support and vote for legal action to make it's certain that Brockton receives its fair share of educational funding. We are a large urban school district. We have diverse student needs. And if for any reason it's determined that somehow we have been shortchanged, then I would certainly want to work with all of the members of the school committee, fellow counselors, with the superintendent, and make sure that that doesn't happen. Because we've done a lot with what we've been given. If, if you really want to look at how educational money is spent, 
take a look at the results that you've gotten from right. this city. So I think we'd be in a pretty strong position, again, depending upon what the legal people tell us. Yeah, I mean, you know, one huge aspect of society today is technology. You know that. We all know that. And, um, you know, we have a school system of close to 17,000 kids, but um, you know, we don't have a technology budget uh, that really, you know, kids today need to be successful. Um, so, I mean, that's huge. And, um, you know, other districts, other wealthier suburban districts can provide that to their kids. One-to-one -one computers. Um, they have, you know, that capability. And, um, you know, we don't want our kids to be behind the um, eight ball. But, you know, when the state starts implementing um, park testing and then says to you in the same breath that uh, uh, we may require that this be done all on computer and you know, okay, great. Well, how do you think we're going to get up to speed? You know, if you're going to just, again, implement an unfunded mandate um, and think that we have the money to just pull out of, you know, uh, millions of dollars it would cost, um, you know, to basically bring the district up to speed in terms of the technological capacity for the computer and the um, software and the technicians to be able to handle that. I mean, you know, yes. you, you need to have tech people, in, you know, a tech department that can handle that many computers and because guess what, you know, we all know technology happens, things break or what, this isn't connected or this isn't working right and, you know, you need to get on the horn and get someone over. So um, that's a huge issue that we need to deal with with respect to providing for our students, you know. Well, I think step one is we've got to get the public safety issue under, under control because we have a lot of kids who walk home from school and we, we, can't, we, we cannot tolerate uh, random shootings because you don't know where the bullet's going to go and I don't want some kid yeah. or some person hit. Uh, we've got to make sure that we increase the staffing for the police and, and fire departments because both of them are so critically important to the city. Got to have a strong and effective school system and obviously it's the financial management. I mean I think people will hear me repeat this over and over and it's it's really not a campaign speech it's just reality yeah. i mean it, it it's basically what a city is all about and if you don't have any of those things in place then you've really set yourself up to fail and i'm determined not to see the city fail um, we've got a couple of minutes left um, any thoughts on the casino or the power plant that you want to touch on or i you know i i am not in favor of the uh... uh power plant uh, I've always thought, very frankly, I think most people know I sometimes speak too honestly. I always thought that was a project. Ooh, like Donald Trump? Oh, no, 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 no comparison there. But, I, but I, uh, I, I think it's always been a project that was meant to make a few people rich, and I'm not quite sure there's much value for anyone else. Um, the casino, I'm, I, you know, it's been voted on even by a few votes. Uh, I'm kind of ambivalent about it. I'm not a big casino person. I don't, yeah, I don't go down yeah. and uh, and uh, send the Farwell monies uh, <laughs> to uh, to uh, Mohegan Sun or or Foxwoods. Um, but right now, frankly, I'm just focused on the election, and I hope people turn out. That's the other issue. Is it? You know, it's it's one thing to be a candidate. It's another thing to worry about. Well, you could have a lot of support, but if they don't vote. Mm -hmm. You've got a problem. So yeah. that's really the focus now is get the message out. Uh, it's going to be a consistent message. Um, no political foolishness. I, I've often said w the best thing I can do if I'm elected is just take each issue as it comes up and look at both sides of it, discuss it with constituents, uh, discuss it with fellow counselors, and just make the right decision. Right. You know, no, no, uh, none of the foolishness that goes on in Washington, for example. It's, couldn't agree more. That's the way I kind of look at things on the school committee. Just look at what's the right thing to do. Don't yep. keep personalities out of it and uh, try to make the best decision and try to make things better than they were last year, you know, this year. That's, it, that's it, you know, very simple. It, it does sound simple, simple but you know what? It works. Yeah. So. It works. So. Well, thank you for coming in, Wynn. I thank appreciate it. Thank you very it, much. And I wish you luck. Thank you. I think you'll be very successful.